Hey everyone, welcome to the show. And the special guest with me today is CEO and co-founder of uh, Gene Print Health. And he's a graduate from Carnegie Mellon University uh, with a degree in mechanical engineering, Dhruv Swaroop. Dhruv, welcome to the show. Nice to be here. First up, Carnegie Mellon, we you know, such a famous university and uh, mechanical engineering. So tell us a little bit about your experience. I, I started doing a, a dual degree so okay. in, in physics and mechanical engineering. Okay, okay. And in fact, I always actually wanted to do only physics, but I was given advice to stick with mechanical engineering just in case. And it was good advice because as, as we went along, I started to question my desire to do physics for the rest of my life because it's not a subject you would do for a few years and then give up. I've, I've done enough courses to get a minor in physics and then I use the remaining time to get a minor in business. Okay. So what advice would you want to give incoming freshmen on um, which engineering degree should they do? There seems to be some confusion there. So we were all accepted into the School of Engineering, it's called the Carnegie Institute of Technology. Right, right. And then from there we were given about eight months to declare a final major within engineering itself. Right. Basically you took two freshman introductory courses in engineering. So I had done uh, chemical engineering and mechanical as my two courses and I chose mechanical. The world today is obviously very, uh, is more on computer development and software development and Carnegie Mellon prides itself with yes. its computer uh, engineering abilities. Yes. So most of the foreign students or most of the Indians and most of my friends were computer engineers. Okay. I think I was one of the three, maybe four Indians from India out of say 50 who was doing mechanical engineering. Oh, wow, is that about a stereotype? 40, <laughs> and 40 of them would have been doing computer engineering and maybe five or six were doing, I don't know, economics or business or oh, okay. something else. Mechanical engineering tends to be a, little more, a lot more hands-on. Right. Doing robotic arms, whether it's building, you know, uh, trusses and structures and things like that. So it tended to be a little bit more physical. Chemical engineering is a very niche subject. I feel it, it, there is definitely a lot of jobs available for chemical engineers because they're, they're rarer. Right. But again, it's, it's very it's a very personal choice and I don't, I, for some reason, not a lot of people took it. Okay. But There's two other fields that seem to be garnering interest, industrial engineering and materials engineering. I don't think we had an industrial engineering. Material engineering was very similar to chemical engineering. Okay. It's a cross between mechanical and, and uh, chemical. So you're, you're dealing with like properties of materials and what would be best for a good structure right. and things like that. Mechanical engineering has two basic facets. One is stress and you know structures and, and dynamics and you know equations of our free body diagrams and you know your, all of that. And then you had your heat transfer and your thermal equations. So those are the two big chunks. Okay. Civil engineering only focused on the first one. Materials engineering tended to focus a little bit more on the second one. Oh, okay. And now robotics seems to be yeah. you know robotics, a big part of mechanical. Uh, it was still primarily a computer engineering field, but we would I mean, you would need a mechanical engineer to design the, the parts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you mentioned changing a major during the course of their program. So a lot of students keep wondering about, you know, have I chosen the right major? Can I change down the lane? So what's your advice to them? You know, you start off in college and, and it's completely fine if you don't know what you're doing. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing even today. It's been three yeah, years, four yeah, years. Yeah. <laughs> to know internally what are the things you like or the things you are good at and both are kind of synonymous because if you don't really like what you're doing you're never going to be really good at it. Right. And physics or a, or a pure science especially I would say is not a subject you can just do to do. It's yeah. something you must yeah. must really care about and yeah. be passionate about. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas say with a business degree it's 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 a little bit more uh, real world so it's a little bit easier to to do even if you're not entirely you know gung-ho about the subject matter itself. I hear you saying go towards what you're passionate about Definitely. rather than where there are more jobs available which is where I see a lot of students going. See, you see that. I feel like that's a tricky thing to make a strong statement about. If it is not a subject that is really being in focus in the real world today then you've got to be extremely passionate about it. Suppose I say something like computer science 
even if you're not all all that passionate about it, there are enough opportunities out there that you'll manage. Obviously, to excel in it, you you would want to be extremely passionate. Right. But right. Whereas in a say, subject like uh, nuclear engineering, you're not going to do nuclear engineering uh, if you're not. Yeah. Yeah. Entirely convinced that you're going to do it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's a trade-off. It's I a would, combination. Yeah, okay. I won't I won't go as far as say only follow your passions because you know you land up with people with degrees that aren't valuable. A lot of students at school think they like a particular subject because they do well at, at that subject in school. Going into college, like you said, they find it's a completely different world. So, what's your take on that? No, I think you're, you're absolutely correct. I think a good example of that would have been my physics degree. Physics in school is—it's not physics. I mean, it's not <laughs> college-level physics. It just jumps a whole new degree that you're not expecting. It's. It's a different subject altogether, almost. So what we are, what we study in school tends to be a little bit more mechanical, Newtonian physics, simpler principles yeah, and yes, sir. one degree equations, first degree equations, second degree equations. When you land up going into quantum physics and electromagnetism and, and general relativity, those are all 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 extremely more uh, complicated. I would advise people to be cautious about picking a pure science without trying being very, it out. Very sure yes. that they want to do it. Students at college dream of being an entrepreneur, and I have one across me. So I need to ask you, what are the key learnings that you've had? What do you want to share with them uh, as they plunge into this world? I guess my advice to that would be very similar to everything else I've been saying, which is you just really got to be passionate about it to do it. It's not something that you can do half-heartedly. There's, there's no 50% dial. It, it has to be 100%. You've got to be living, breathing it. If you if you want it to succeed, it, it, it takes a lot of effort. It yeah. takes a lot of uh, false starts, a lot of just banging your head against the door, yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. disappointment at times. But at the end of the day, it's also very satisfying when you get things right. Uh, your emotions are a lot more involved. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you feel every up a lot more, but you also feel every down a lot more. Yeah. And you just have to weather the whole thing. And, and keep motivating yeah. yourself every morning. Yeah, yeah but at the end of the day, if, if it is something you really are passionate about, you will end up enjoying it irrespective. Sure. So again, I would say, while, while it sounds really rosy today, everyone doing startups, it, it's tough. It is. It's it tough, is. but it's fun. Yeah. If you like it. True. So. Tough and fun are the two perfect words to describe it. And how do you think this experience has changed you as a person? You may have an idea, and you may have something else, but what makes or breaks the company is ultimately going to be you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that teaches you responsibility like nothing else. Absolutely. We talk about dive right in, you've yeah. dived into the ocean right Absolutely. in. <laughs> Can't take your foot off the gas no, for a minute. No, no, no. So if, if you are the kind of person who, who wants to you know, have a work-life balance as they call it these days, I wouldn't recommend it. Absolutely. <laughs> but if it is something you really care about, it's something you really want to do, and it's something you think you can give 100% of your attention to, then absolutely go for it. Go for it. So Dhruv, what would you say is the big mistakes that freshmen make as they get into college? Okay, so I've got I've got two good examples. One's a serious one, one's not so serious, but I think I think a really serious mistake freshmen make is they ignore the importance of say one grade, which you just cannot do. I mean, you are your your GPA, it's a cumulative score. So you get one D, that's gonna stay forever. So you cannot at any point slack off and say, you know what, I'm in my freshman year, I'll get serious next year. You can't say, look, this course, I don't like this course, I'll, I just don't care, I won't do it. At the end of the day, your transcript reflects every single course you've done. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it just takes something small like not taking a final exam seriously or not turning in a homework assignment on time. It could be missing attendance also yeah, sometimes. No, it happens. I, I, I think especially in business courses or humanitarian courses, participation in class is extremely important. There was a I think about a 15 to 20 percent weightage on just being in class. Yeah. And the second thing is just be careful about your food. Okay. You're not used to eating that amount of meat. I wasn't. Is it something called freshman 15 where you put on 15 pounds in your first year? Is that true? It happens to a lot of people. <laughs> Quantities of food are massive. You're not used to eating that much food, but you finish it, you know, because you, well, you're alone, you're independent, you get to eat what you want. read about CMU and the dining facilities not being uh, sort of as great. Uh, is that true? 
<laughs> I think I think every college student feels that their college eating facilities are rubbish. Not that great, okay. <laughs> All right. It's, it's college food. But no, we had a very unique system where we were uh, we didn't have a dining hall. Right. We had restaurants on campus, and we were part of a meal plan, and then you could go and get a meal block at the various restaurants. We didn't really try hard to make good food. Yeah. And we had to eat it because you know you're not going to go off campus, especially as a freshman, so much to eat food. True. I think True. what I did personally was after. The minute I was off the meal plan, I don't think I ate on campus after that. Oh, okay, uh, okay. So do you move out housing as well? Is that a preferred option? Um, it, again, it's, it's a very personal preference. I did move off for a year, but then I came back. Okay. Because I didn't like walking through the cold to class. Yeah. So, so I and I like being on campus because I like to play my you know, tennis and squash during the week. So personally, even though the rooms tend to be smaller on campus, I prefer to be on campus because I didn't spend a lot of time in my room. As a rule, most international students did tend to get an apartment off campus. I think the primary driver was uh, being able to cook. Food, yeah. You, you get yeah. a kitchen. Yeah. I, I wasn't ever that fussy about my food, so I, I enjoyed being on campus rather than off. Sure, so. sure. <laughs> so thank you so much, Ru, for sharing all that with us. I thought it was invaluable, the advice you've given us. And Thanks. wish you all the best with your venture going forward. Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, thank you. Please click the subscribe button below. Like me at facebook.com slash chatchat101, follow my Twitter handle chatchat101 or at Instagram chatchat101. Please leave your comments in the sections below and if you'd like me to feature any particular college, please let me know. Thank you.